Interior Police Commissioner Office. Same. Commissioner Kendra Jones, 45, fit but noticeably worn, takes a folder from an officer and dismisses him. As an officer, she would have been a force to be reckoned with. As the officer leaves, Bruce enters. Commissioner Jones greets him with a handshake. Bruce Wayne, always a pleasure. You're looking good, Kendra. A little tired, but what can you do, right? She offers Bruce to take a seat. Commissioner Jones sits down. Bruce remains standing. I can't stay long. I have a council meeting at City Hall. They appreciate my long relationship with the force and would like to know if there's anything that I could pass on. The commissioner sorts through the pile of files on her desk. Nothing they don't already know. We need funds to keep up with the growing needs of the city. The media paints a pretty bleak picture. In some ways, it's worse. Yeah, we don't have the supervillains anymore, but now we have warlords and gangs fighting for their footholds in our streets. Come with me. I need a little air. Exterior, Gotham Police Station, rooftop, day. Commissioner Jones and Bruce stand overlooking Gotham. A huge searchlight covered under a tarp rests in the middle of the flat roof. Commissioner Jones lights up a cigarette. One of the few places in the city where I can get away with this. Bruce notices that the heavy-duty electrical outlet on the wall is empty. There was a time when we could flip a switch and expect all our troubles to be solved. For the past 15 years, the city has learned to take care of itself. When I took over from James Gordon, I truly believe that. Now he's retired, living in the island somewhere, and we once again have our hands full. Who runs the gangs? Bruce takes a peek under the tarp. There are several. But Victor Gray and his skulls and a group calling themselves the False Face Society seem to have the upper hand. They both have muscle, weapons, and fear on their side. The other groups are small-time, but keep things interesting enough. The False Face Society? Are you sure? Yeah. They always wear masks so we can't identify any of them. We don't know who leads them, but they're vicious. Back in the day, their leader was the Black Mask, but he's still in Blackgate Penitentiary, last I heard. Very smart and vicious psychopath was my understanding. Yeah, well, Arkham cleared him, and he's done his time in Blackgate. He's up for parole next week. Bruce walks to the edge of the roof, overlooking Gotham. Heroes can come from the most unlikely sources, but every now and then, I sure wish we had ours. If nothing else but to maintain some kind of balance, you know? Even heroes get old, Commissioner. Yes, but legends don't. Exterior, back alley, day. A poorly lit alley between warehouses. A black SUV stops at a door. Two hoods, one wearing a skull and crossbones mask, 20s, the other with a white mask with red eyes, 20s, get out of the SUV. The white mask with red eyes grabs two metal boxes from the trunk, the other guards with a sawed-off shotgun. They enter the warehouse, home of the False Face Society. Interior, warehouse, same. In the middle of the warehouse, a tall, muscular fellow wearing a blue mask, 30s, stands in front of a hood, Fernando, early 20s, face bruised and bloodied. Two others, a hulk wearing a red mask, 20s, with bloody eyes and mouth, the other a green mask, 20s, with dinosaur teeth, watch. The boxes are placed on the table. The blue mask works over his victim. See? I don't need to go around stealing from ATMs, terrorizing banks, mugging people in parking lots, or causing street fights. He slugs his victim right across the face. People come to me voluntarily. He crosses to the table, opens a box, and takes a wad of bills. He walks to his victim, fanning himself with money. I don't have to lift a finger, except for you, and it truly pains me to be in this situation. He pulls a switchblade from his back pocket and holds it under Fernando's throat. There's just enough pressure to draw a drop of blood. So you go back to Victor, and you let him know that if I ever see you guys trying to hustle in my city, the next guy will be returned in that little box over there. Gotham is ours. You and the others can have whatever scraps I leave behind. He signals the two hoods sitting at the table. Drop him off. Exterior, Gotham Bay, day. A ferry docks on a small island, home to Blackgate Penitentiary. Even in the middle of the day, Gotham's high-security prison appears bleak and uninviting. Interior, Blackgate Penitentiary, interrogation room, day. 
Bruce sits patiently at a table. A bar is mounted across the center of the table. Two guards bring in a prisoner dressed in prison orange, Roman Sionis, 70. His face is heavily scarred, his jaw slightly distorted. His eyes and expression are pure evil. The guards sit him down across from Bruce and fasten his handcuffed wrists to the bar on the table. Bruce nods at the guards. They leave. Roman relaxes a bit. So nice of you to visit. And just a few days before my release. They glare at each other. There's no love loss here. It's been a while, Bruce. What, twenty years? Closer to twenty-five. Still running my company? The one you ran into the ground and I had to bail out to save everyone's job? That one? Roman nods and stares. You've got a new look. You like it? Two years and I can't even tell how many surgeries to remove that damn mask. And look what I'm left with. He strikes a modeling pose. A face not even a mother could love. Not that it would have made a bit of difference to that witch. Oh, and the jaw? I'll have to thank Catwoman for that one day. Small price for killing her brother-in-law. The price for stealing from me. What happened to the mask? Ah, that's why you're here. Having a little trouble in town, are we? The False Face Society. Is this you? How is that even possible? I don't believe in coincidence. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Don't you get it? I'm famous. A legend. People just want to be like me. I've made a lot of friends here. Mentored a few really good ones. A guard appears in the door window. He points to his watch. I don't suppose a name is forthcoming. It won't matter. There will always be another. That's my legacy, don't you see? There will always be another. What's your legacy, Bruce? Who is going to remember the great Bruce Wayne when you're gone? No one wants to be like you. A hermit. No heir. No family. Nothing. The horn goes off. The guards enter and undo the cuffs from the bar. Roman stares Bruce down. A devilish smile and an assuring wink. Give everyone my love. Bruce watches as the guards lead Roman out of the room. He sits alone.